Hi guys. February 13, 2019, a California school teacher speaks out. Americans, we need to wake up. We need to wake up. I want to read what this teacher posted on Facebook. As you listen to the news about the student protests over illegal immigration, there are some things that you should be aware of. I am in charge of the English as a Second Language Department at a large Southern California high school, which is designated a Title I school, meaning that its students average in the lower socioeconomic and income levels. Most of the schools you are hearing about are Compton, Southgate High, Bell Gardens, Huntington Park, etc., where their students are protesting. These are also Title I schools. Title I schools are on the free breakfast and free lunch program. When I say free breakfast, I'm not talking about a glass of milk and a roll, but a full breakfast and cereal bar with fruits and juices that would make the Marriott proud. That strikes me as unbelievable because our public school systems give out the most horrendous food, lunches, breakfasts, breakfast to the kids, but okay. The waste of this food is monumental, with trays and trays of it being dumped in the trash, uneaten, our tax dollars at work. I estimate, estimate that well over 50% of these students are obese, or at least moderately overweight. About 75% or more have cell phones. The school also provides daycare centers for the unwed teenage pregnant girls, some as young as 13, so they can attend class without the inconvenience of having to arrange for a babysitter or having family watch their kids. More of our tax dollars at work. I was ordered to spend 700000 on my department or risk losing funding for the upcoming year, even though there was little need for anything. My budget was already substantial, but I ended up buying new computers for the Computer Learning Center, half of which, one month later, were carved with graffiti by the appreciative students, who obviously felt humbled and grateful to have a free education in America. More and more of our tax dollars at work. I have had to intervene several times for young substitute teachers whose classes consist of many illegal immigrant students here in the country, less than three months, who raised so much hell with the female teachers calling them putas, whores, and throwing things that the teachers were in tears. Free medical care, free education, free food, free daycare. Is it any wonder they feel entitled not only to be in this country, but also to demand rights, privileges, and entitlements? To those who want to point out how much these illegal immigrants contribute to our society because they happen to like their gardener or housekeeper, and they like to pay less for tomatoes, I say spend some time in the real world of illegal immigration and see the true costs. Higher insurance, medical facilities closing, higher medical costs, more crime, lower standards of education in our schools, overcrowding, new diseases. For me, I'll pay more for tomatoes. Americans, we need to wake up. The guest worker program will be a disaster because we won't have the guts to enforce it. Does anyone in their right mind really think they will voluntarily leave and return? It does, however, have everything to do with culture. A third world culture that does not value education, that accepts children getting pregnant and dropping out of school by age 15, and that refuses to assimilate plus an American culture that has become so weak and worried about political correctness that we don't have the will to do what is needed. 
If this makes your blood boil as it did mine, forward this to every everyone you know, including your congressmen and center, uh, senators. Cheap labor, is that what the whole immigration issue is about? Business doesn't want to pay a decent wage. Consumers don't want expensive produce. Government will tell you Americans don't want the jobs. But the bottom line is cheap labor. The phrase cheap labor is a myth, a farce, and a lie. There is no such thing as cheap labor. Take, for example, an illegal alien with a wife and five children. He takes a job for five or six dollars an hour. At that wage, with six dependents, he pays no income tax. Yet at the end of the year, if he files an income tax return, he gets an earned income credit of up to $3,200 free. Also, he qualifies for Section 8 housing and subsidized rent. He qualifies for food stamps. He qualifies for free, no deductible, no copay health care. His children get free breakfasts and lunches at school. He requires bilingual teachers and books. He qualifies for relief from high energy bills. If they are or become aged, blind or disabled, they qualify for SSI. Once qualified for SSI, they can qualify for Medicare. All of this at taxpayers' expense, your expense, our expense, the legal residents, citizens' expense. He doesn't worry about car insurance, life insurance, or homeowners' insurance. Taxpayers provide Spanish language signs, language signs, bulletins, and printed material. He and his family receive the equivalent of twenty to thirty dollars an hour in benefits. Working Americans are lucky to have five or six dollars an hour left after paying their bills. And his uh, paying his bill, <laughs> oh, I get it, I'm sorry, paying their bills and the illegal immigrants' bills. The American taxpayers also pays for increased crime, graffiti, trash cleanup, free child care free mommy maker makeovers after having their children I don't know are, are you kidding tummy tuck and breast lifts well that I haven't researched so okay free tummy tuck and breast lifts cheap labor yeah right wake up people wake up people wake up people there are questions we should be addressing to the presidential candidates for either party. Oh, yes, that's right. We're heading into yet another campaign. Long, long campaign for the pres presidency. It, it just makes me sick. You know, it goes on every friggin two years. Anyway, we must take action or we will all go down the drain because a few don't care. And if you think this is bad, just wait until a Democrat becomes president and the redistribution of wealth becomes the norm in this ex-democracy. The estimated annual cost now for state, local, and federal is $400 billion a year. Okay. Um... There are a lot of organizations on it that that 400 billion is a bit too high. Fair here, um, the fiscal burden of illegal immigration on United States taxpayers. So I will link below to everything. You can check this out. Uh, the cost of illegal immigration to the United States, they breaking down the taxes that illegal immigration uh, immigrants do pay, is um, at the federal, state, and local levels, well, it's really $135 billion annually. $135 billion dollars. 
goes to subsidizing illegal immigrants in our country. The 12.5 million illegal aliens. You know, I am an ex, I guess, liberal progressive Democrat. Always voting Democrat. And I will tell you that my ex-liberal progressive Democrat friends would be rah-rah. Yes, we have to help all of those in the world that are fleeing their governments, their tyranny, their crime, their pov poverty. But I will tell you this, they would not be so rah-rah if those illegal immigrants were coming into their neighborhoods setting up shop. Most of my ex-Democrat friends also were those who enjoyed very nice salaries. So the bit of uh, taxes that they had to pay, they didn't suffer any hardship. So it was easy for them to pay additional taxes to support illegal immigrants as long as they didn't come into their neighborhoods. Many Americans are no longer enjoying nice salaries. So every increase in their taxes that they have to pay, many are feeling a hardship. But we have so many Americans now who need to be subsidized because of our economy, because, yes, even under Trump, our economy is not doing well, and the jobs that are created are service sector jobs hardly decent employment to sustain a middle-class lifestyle, which many Americans had for a very long time, and many are falling into the lower classes because the jobs that we used to have, we don't have anymore. So. This is hurting an awful lot of people. But when you think, just think about, hey, those homeless, homeless people, right? That's, uh, well, American homeless. The numbers just continue to rise. California, wow, do you have a massive, massive problem but you shell out $23 billion a year for those who are in this country illegally. Does that make any sense? Of course not. So when you think of a country as a family, okay, you have a family and, well, a healthy family will ensure that they can properly provide for one another. The father, the mother, they provide for their children. And when you have that structure, a healthy family that is strong, and economically or financially sound, then they can help. They can go outside the family and help their community. And then when you have this sound financial community, then that community can, can then go beyond the community and help the state, the residents of the state. 
So once you have that kind of sound grounding in your state and then extend it out to the country, that's when you start helping others who are outside the country. You don't just continue to pay more and more to help those who are in this country illegally when you can't help your own. None of this makes any sense. Except if you have a deliberate plan to destroy the United States. Destroy its culture, destroy its economy, and bring in that new world order where we're borderless, everybody's the same, and we're all kumbaya in this new world order. 23 billion California. And those California residents who are homeless have virtually no services offered for them. 11 billion in Texas, 2.3 billion in Arizona, 1.6 billion in Nevada, 1.2 billion Oregon, 2 billion Washington, and 6.3 billion Florida. Tiny numbers, but this is insane what we are doing. We're not helping our own. So when you think about our country, our governments, not helping American citizens when they're helping all of those who are not citizens come across the border illegally. Just think of the really dysfunctional, unhealthy family that doesn't help its own. That's what we have become. A dysfunctional, uh, family that is so exceedingly evil, narcissistic, psychopathic, loves to destroy instead of enhance its own. And we see this going on every single day. It is in our face. The political correctness really has to stop because it is destroying us. You get to see how uh, real that political correct correctness is within the individual when you say, okay, open your door, open your door and you subsidize an illegal immigrant family. Suddenly, they change their tune. Hope you're having a good night.